Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on March 13th, 2019 at 6.05 p.m. at the municipal offices here in the center of South Deerfield. Uh, first, we'd like to uh, start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you all please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting is being televised and recorded. Um, the first item on our agenda, we do have a 6.30 p.m. capital improvement program uh, public hearing. So I guess we're going to need to wait for that. Do you want to skip down and uh, deal with a Yankee Candle one-day liquor license for March 19th? I make a motion we approve um, the one-day liquor license for Yankee Candle. I second the motion. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do you need us to sign that? Yeah. Cool. Oh, no, that's the application. Yeah. I think she's got the other thing stamped on it. She's just um, stamped. This next oh, okay. thing is the overlay. We used to sign them all the time. Yeah, well, yeah, I think she gives them to me. I, we're yeah. skipping the library? Yeah. Good. Where's my, um, she's definitely being there. Oh, okay. So she's not coming until next week. Okay. Yep. You're going to, oh, so the library folks, um, I mentioned at the start of the meeting, kept the library <coughs> folks, they were going to be here under the new business library sure. budget. Sure. Uh, they had requested to table that until your next meeting on March 20th. Great. Okay. okay. So the next thing is the request of release of overlay from the assessors. Do you want us to sign that license now? Or I guess she's got no. Stamp. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to stamp it. Uh, it's a request for release of an overlay from the assessors? Sure. Yeah, they were looking... They were looking to um, release 100, well, we're looking to have them release um, 100,000. I make a motion that we ask the um, assessors to release 100,000 in excess overlay. Let's second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Um, the, uh, obviously, the assessors felt comfortable with this, Diana. I haven't had any well, conversation Well, this has actually been recommended by the town accountant. So this is actually um, something that she's recommending based on the evaluation of where we're at in um, needing to give abatements. Mm -hmm. um, so there is excess overlay. She did speak to Karen about it, but you and I believe she's comfortable with it. But you're actually going to be requesting that no, the assessors yeah, and then have it. them look at it and see what they think. Exactly. Well, okay. we usually... Yeah, I think she. I think she did. The, yes, they're comfortable with the, okay. with the request. Okay. All right, then I feel comfortable asking. Okay. Well, we can always ask. They can say no. I guess they can. I know, but all those in favor? Aye. 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 I know, but thank you. And I basically what I do is I just prepare yep. a letter that right. says you voted okay. today to ask, and Perfect. I send good. it to them, and they put it on their meeting agenda. All right. The next item is to review articles for the annual election warrant, address debt exclusion votes for the wastewater treatment plant and frontier capital plan. So I actually have review articles and I have neglected to give you those because we don't really have the articles drafted. The, the vote I was speaking of is for the frontier capital plan is actually a vote that has to go to the annual town meeting and it's been presented yep. by frontier and you've seen that it's been in your mm -hmm. packet from the finance committee. I think really what needs to be addressed is if you in fact are going to ask for a debt exclusion vote so that we can get that question ready and the town clerk can just know that that's going to be put onto the ballot. Um, but there hadn't, you know, you hadn't really voted to actually say that you were going to do that at this election for, for sure. So if you do that now, then you're basically notifying her that you're going to do that. She got a notifier in 35 days and then, you know, we'll work with bond council and the appropriate councils to get the question drafted correctly. And of course, back to you at some point to review, but you need to decide if you want to put the question on. Uh, I think we would have to. I mean, that's the only way I think that's the most appropriate way to pay pay for this. Or, or you could pay uh, for it out of um, 
stabilization, right? Is, or can you debt exclude and also pay out of stabilization? So you can debt exclude it and then ha and then you could pay mm -hmm. it any other way you want? No, I mean, I think the idea is you, you have an authorization to borrow right now. Correct. So the way that you're going to fund the project is you're going to borrow. You can pay the borrowing back right. in other ways, as mm -hmm. I think what you're saying. Right. But if you're going to borrow over a length of time, now you want to decide, are you going to, are you going to, like you're saying, are you going to pay it back in one year out of stabilization? Do you, if you are going to borrow it over, say, five years or ten years, just this one million we're talking about, right. do you want to have that debt excluded above the levy, which the Finance Committee strongly suggests? Mm -hmm. Um, you could also do a capital exclusion, which is a one-year exclusion for right. just the 250. That's a one-year time. Right. I think um, Skip told you what the but value was on we'll your tax I'm rate not, for one I'm year. Not, I'm not sure that I feel comfortable making a decision on the debt exclusion because I feel like um, if we do short-term borrowing, we have the potential to use capital reserves from the wastewater mm -hmm. treatment. That's right. And then we just pay 250 out of our operating expenses, which is what we were doing, like for Oxford Pickle before. And um, you know, to go through the debt exclusion for yeah, then you not have that. very much That's money. Correct. Well, yeah. and we're, we're going to be going to the residents in two months to ask for a large debt exclusion. I right. mean, the, well, the debt exclusion I wanted was you know for the phase one of the project, and I and my well, thought is we're hoping with the USDA grant or loan when we get a um, notice on that, that we could roll then this then part have a into plan. it. Right, we have a right. plan. And but so so let me just to, just to comment yeah, on that before ahead. Skip, I mean, excuse me, before Kip comments, that with a debt exclusion, you do, you, you, I, you know, if you look it up under the Mass General Law, it, you cannot include, we talked about this, in a debt exclusion, the value of the project. Correct. It's just going to be the project. So you can do what you and Carolyn are now talking about possibly mm -hmm. doing is not doing that. We're just asking if you want to do it on the annual election. You don't have to do it now. You can have an election any time and do a debt exclusion for the million dollars or, or this project, which you'd be debt excluding. I, I feel like we don't have enough information in our plan right now to move forward to ask people to support a basically a blank check. So the project. The yes. Debt the whole project. Right. right. Well I mean I we mean, could on phase if, one. Well, you could, yes, you could but say this is the project. If we get four and a half million dollars, we're going to move ahead quite fast. I doubt we'll get that. Okay, much, but, but if we get two million, mm -hmm. then we got to figure out what we're going to do. If we get a million and two percent loan for thirty years, obviously we're going to do some stuff. But then we got to figure out what has a life uh, span of less than thirty years that we need to finance some other way. And then we finance well, some the of this idea, stuff. And but the whole idea of that USDA loan is that they're going to give it to us, the loan, at whatever, two and a quarter, two and three quarter, whatever the percent is, and we're, we're, that's how we're going to pay that. And then however we pay that loan back is what we decide how we pay the loan right. back. Right. And, and the reason why we raised the rates was that we were generating enough so, money to pay for some of this stuff as we but went. But this is only, the debt exclusion is only really talking about the munici the one that's going to be on the general fund. So it's right. not talking about the sewer. I know, but I, what I'm just saying right, is you're that talking about the sewer I just think that this is too little, too early well, in my mind. My question is that it, I don't disagree with what you guys are suggesting with the exception that the 750000 that's coming from the sewer users, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that they can absorb that all in one year, considering the rates that are going to go up as well. Well, so. they have capital reserves of about a million right now. And then they're, and this well, next, they be, the doesn't next, have, well, and they can still, we still have the authorization to borrow, Kip. It doesn't right. mean that just we're because you don't debt exclude year. it, it right. doesn't mean that they have to pay it back in one year. I'm not sure where the correlation is. Well, if, you, if, if we spend the money, we have to take the money. So, you know, then we're going to be recouping the money through funds that are generated, and we get that, I think, spring and fall. Mm -hmm. So it really would be till fall. So how will that affect the <coughs> operating budget? Because all of that money comes from the same pile. But we're, you, you're collecting the next, I mean, they have the 750000 will already be, I mean, the million that they have in there now will be certified. That's already there. Right. Then this, what we're collecting right now is going in there as well. Well, I... And so that will be like another half a million.
for this from this billing. And but then the, we'll have another half a million from the next billing. And but the idea is we would take we wouldn't spend all of that <clears throat> at one time. I think we would pay the, the interest on the loan and some principal, however we want to schedule that out, talking with bond council and I, I know we're um, <clears throat> This is jumping down, but I wanted Diana to put like a bookmark on her um, computer because um, DeLeo is um, pushing through for this um, session the Green Works Resilient Communities Investment Plan, and it's a billion dollars over 10 years, so it's 100 million a year, and it's for um, resiliency infrastructure and um, projects within your community that have to be renewed. And, and so I think this would be one of those things that we could, our story could lend, because it's next to the river and all that kind of stuff that we've been talking about. So I don't have, I, I tried looking it up right now to see what were the guidelines for the, but this is another pot of money that we could be applying for, hopefully. And, and so, you know, I just, I don't, I don't think, I think it's too early, because we, we got, we really don't know what we're doing yet. If you, if you, if you're suggesting that we just wait a few more weeks, that that's I'm I'm absolutely fine with that. Mm. But I, one of the things that I kind of see is that you know, the other night we got approval for a million dollars, mm -hmm. and you know, um, April we're going to be asking for another million, and then you know we're going to be starting some five. other stuff. So, you know, and then you got the school thing. So all of these things come together, and, and I don't want to be caught with starting something and then have, having a shortfall, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I we can, it. I yeah, think so, so hopefully by town meeting we'd have a better idea of what's okay. happening. Right. All right, so why so, don't we just so wait let me, this? Yeah, so let me just, so just, just so I, you understand. So the, the annual election is the week after town meeting. So if you don't, you have 35 days before that to inform the town clerk officially whether you want to put a question on the ballot. So that time frame is coming up. So right. if you wait till town meeting, you can't put it on the right, annual right, ballot. Right. But you can have an election right, at another right, time, right. of yeah. course. But if, maybe so the when's the 30 days weeks? backing down on the 30 it's days? It's 35 what? days. It's coming up. It's, I think it would be definitely by next week. I'll tell you the exact time. But, um, 30 days you know, by the meeting or the election? Uh, it has to be 35 days before the election, and the election is like May, the first week of May. Right. So yeah. we're coming up against yeah, that time. Six. Barbara understands that you're discussing this. She just wants us to, she want, you know, she, we, we're going to have to make a decision. And I think the financial team, just so you understand, I think we tend to be leaning, if I could speak for, for the group, toward what you're saying is that we, um, we don't necessarily think we have to do the debt exclusion at this election. Um, we know that the finance committee has a, de a desire to debt exclude, you know, this project. But we yeah. have, and and but we have a lot of, you know, we're in the midst of, of calculating, you know, a lot of the finances. Um, and then also, I think just in terms of, um, uh, yeah, I mean the, the reserves and you know what you said about. Well, you don't put a dollar amount on the debt exclusion. Yeah. You just do the project, and I think the. I mean, right. in my mind, the project that I'm com comfortable with right now is, is this phase 1A that we got uh, approval for last yeah. Monday night, and then phase 1, which would be the Headworks program, the secondary clarifier changing from chlorine over to UV and putting a generator outside. Um, that, that project, we feel pretty confident, that, and that's kind of what we're in, but that's rolling into the that's, U.S. That's 11.5. Yeah. And so. that's... that's you know, I want to be prepared to ask for that at annual town meeting, the approval for that at that time, if in the next couple of weeks I get all those answers done and we can find out where that USDA loan is. Right, and so if you're going well, to be looking at that, then you... discussion yeah. a little bit till yeah, next week. Then. Yeah, I was okay. going to also mention, well, the, the, if, if, I don't know if we know if there's going to be spending needed before June 30th. <clears throat> Correct. But that Correct. was another thing we were trying to ascertain because that is meaningful and when we need to have the the debt in the budget. If we may right. not need it in 2020, if we don't we, need we to may borrow just need it, it before this year. That's right. That's, so. that's the key. Okay, we'll put it on next well, week. Well, my, my concern is that 35 days back, and I'm what sure Easter's date? in there somewhere, is like next Monday. Next Monday. Well, I think it's, you know, I think as long as she knows we're considering it, I think she would be okay. I mean, we'll double check, but. With Easter um, included, Tim? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, it's, it's so the town clerk can prepare. I think you do. Um, 
No, I think it's, I thought it was 30, it just 35 says, business days. I think it just days. says 35 days. I oh, don't it's think not it business actually days? says business. It doesn't say. Oh. So if it's days, it's just kind <coughs> Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I think we're okay. But I just want to keep us Then table it for next it. week and we'll get okay. some answers on it. All right, yeah. we'll do. Have, have, speaking Thank of that, you. Have, we, have you spoken with um, Dave and his gang about where our information is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's. Oh, he, I, I was hoping he'd have it for Monday night, um, so I'll talk to him tomorrow and see if I can have it this week. He's that close to finishing our assessment. Um, the application's in and up, right. and we can have a copy of that. So, and I know everybody's anxious to look at the assessment stuff, and then we have to get started on the phase one. I think it's imperative to impress on him that if we don't have that with having enough information, how are you going to go? or I shouldn't say you, how are we going to go mm -hmm. to town meeting and look for that type of money right. when we don't even know what avenue we're, we're choosing yet, right. you know? And, and that's well, a big I thing. I think you that's do know that avenue, don't you? Well, no, we, know, we know generally what we want to do, but I mean, I want to like drill down a little bit once we find out what we're going to get from the USDA. And, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, oh, yeah. if we get nothing, then we've got to look at stretching this out and doing a different game plan but you still have phase one to do right i mean yeah. or maybe you We're wouldn't do chlorine would you i mean you I have to right I, yeah i, mean, I, th I well, think no, we have to do a different works. choices there and that's what i'm saying we don't know what he has in there for choices so this road map that we mm -hmm. wanted to is just a bunch of squiggly lines at this point <laughs> where we don't know if this one's going to amherst or greenfield mm -hmm. and that we need this information to say okay is this you know, chlorine gas a better thing? Is a bubbler aeration thing? Is a generator of this size here adequate? Or should, can we put it over here? You know, we have none of these details. Yeah. And there's just so many of them. All we have is, well, this is about, it's, it's no different than Frontier. This is what we need, and, mm -hmm. and it's just one opinion. So anyway. Anyway, so yeah. I, if I you, think if only, we had a little bit more information, and then well, we we'll can, put that on the yeah. next week's agenda and Perfect. really push for that because we yep. should get that and get it going. Yep. Okay. Uh, next thing, to review the job description for the administrative clerk or the inspection. Well, I, um, I think we were gonna like. Uh, do we have the articles for the warrant? No. 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 Oh, yes. She, she said she, we oh, didn't have those. Okay. Yep. You mean mm -hmm. for? Oh, the, oh, no, not the town, the special town, the annual town meeting? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. no. Oh, okay. Not, yeah. not quite yet. No. I, I didn't think so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, a couple more. I'll tell you the timing during my report. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't skipping anything. Did you have the... Um, uh, yes, it's in there. It should be in your packet. It's at the it's end at the because oh, um, I mixed up, I guess, the two last order things. I put, them, I put it okay. after the zoning bylaw stuff. Okay. But it's in there. It's the last thing. So this is um <coughs> so last week um, you had to go to a meeting but after you left um, the board voted a position description for clerical support for the for the inspections office based on some dialogue we had with the finance committee basically what they felt comfortable with supporting this coming year and so Kip and I worked on uh, a, a job description that now we'd like to, that the Finance Committee has supported last night that they did approve for the mm -hmm. Inspections Department. Um, and so we'd like to uh, post it now, basically, because there seems to be money available in this year's budget for that. So, and it seems like it will be funded next year. And it's absolutely necessary in terms of staffing. Um, I make a motion to Hang post on. this. Oh, OK. Can I, and then we can have discussion? Yeah. OK. I second the motion. So any further discussion? Yes. Um, so I just want to, so are, we're comfortable that this is enough. I mean, we talked the other day about supporting um, a position here and a position, you know, or somebody to cover the, both of those offices because we were getting a lot of stuff sucked out of our office into there. And we had this discussion, right? right. And so um, I was under the impression we were kind of moving forward with a position for that. But I guess there was discussion after the fact that we were, that maybe that was too much of a person and we didn't need all that help. Um, so I just wanted to background of where we're at because I think we were kind of in agreement that we needed that help and now we're down to 
a different position. So I just wanted to know where that came from and what we should be doing. I think this was agreed it, upon, right? By, right. I, I, uh, I like think a phase in or transition. Well, first, let me back up to that. You know, besides the town administrator, we're still looking for an assistant town mm -hmm. administrator. That's right. So those two positions. Okay, good. Correct. So uh, putting that aside, uh, yep. we do need help in the inspections department. Agreed. And that uh, I, I think it was a general consensus of the finance committee that they didn't feel that all of that help was needed. And I, I tried to convince them that uh, we should take advantage of uh, Priscilla while she's still here because she's got a, an awful lot of experience mm -hmm. uh, in that department. And, you know, she was a teacher for the majority of her life, and she can relate to people really well. And that by bringing someone in part-time that she might be able to teach them all the fundamentals and how, to, how the department uh, functions. And that, you know, in a couple of years when she's gone and retired that we might have someone that's well established instead of waiting to that time. Correct. And so they went along with it. Uh, one of the other things I said is that, you know, after a year we can, um, you know, reevaluate that position and see if that person's also overwhelmed and that maybe we could either we'll hire that it. person to a full time or, right. you know, move on to somebody else. Fair enough. You know, so. I think the thing we, we primarily backed off, I think we made, you know, we, we ended with this job description for inspections, which, which I think is good. I absolutely yeah. agree with what yeah. Kip said. Um, I think the one, uh, the, the, the thing that's going to happen in this coming year that still remains to be seen is that the, the building commissioner and the health agent are going to be two people, two right. different people. So this position still says in the statement of duties that it's supporting inspections and health agent, but its supervisor is the commissioner. So, you know, we'll see, I think Probably. over this next year, um, how they, will, you how know, they yeah, I think, in. yeah, but I think for now it's, it's a great start to get okay. support. And it gives you support. Well, it gives that area the land use planning, right. Right. which is exactly what we, yes, it's CONCOM. If you look at it, it says Conservation Commission and Committees. I mean, we, we intend that to be the, um, I, I want to move the zoning piece over to that position mm -hmm. away from, and, and Priscilla Good. agreed that this is how it should be, that it should be the conservation and the zoning. And yep. then supporting the planning, the staff, that planning official to some right. capacity, and then the building commissioner and health agent, to the capacity, you know, to, right. and then Dick will be able to focus as the health agent, so he also will provide some administrative capacity to that department as the, well. The other, the other key thing that I thought was important is that uh, usually after two o'clock in the afternoon, there's nobody there, and once we do get this person in it and they kind of learn how things are going, that Priscilla can come in early or maybe leave early, and this other person can come in later and stay later. So we, so have, we have someone in the office all the mm -hmm. time. Uh, usually, if uh, you know anyone comes into the office early, you know Dick is there before eight, mm -hmm. um, and Priscilla gets in around ten. Uh, but there's a lot of times that you know either he's out or it's her day off, and so there's nobody around. And right. I, I just thought that would be better to have somebody available all the time. Because mm -hmm. yeah. what what happens is that the, the people, when there's nobody there, they go across the hall to ask Barbara to go down and, and right. engage in dialogue in your office. So right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it kind of takes a lot yeah. for it. So. Yep, sure. So, yep, yep. I think it's a really good start. So hopefully okay. you know, so we can get this. I think, didn't you say you already did this or are you going to? No, I oh. wanted to wait to you guys, oh, okay. but I, yeah, I got the other two posted. But yes, this would be posted right away if you approve it. Okay, so we had a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Perfect timing. Okay. okay. We're at 6.30. Oh. Perfect. Do you want to have start the hearing now? Yeah. Yes. Six thirty. You guys want to come up? Hi, Jack. Good. Hey. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Again. Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming out again. Um, this was the published public hearing <laughs> yeah so I did I did include the public Thanks. hearing notice in your agenda and also a copy of it and the tear sheet from the recorder in case there's any questions yep. um, but it was posted and said we would have the hearing today and we did um, have the uh, the program available for inspection and so we're ready to have the hearing thank you I'm gonna read this or or is it, is it my, is it our board to read this or is it me? Yeah, Jeff? it's actually, no, it's a select board's okay, hearing great. per okay. the bylaw right, and it's referenced in the bylaw that right, way as well. No, go ahead. Okay, good. 
um, the Town of Deerfield public hearing notice or a capital improvement program for fiscal year 20 through 24. The select board of the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing on March 13, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Road, South Deerfield, Mass., in accordance with the Town of Deerfield's bylaws, Chapter 10, Article 4, Section 10 through 18, Capital Program. The capital plan will be available for inspection beginning March 7th between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. in the Deerfield uh, Town Clerk's Office at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, or at the town's website, www.deerfield.mass.us. So here we go. Okay, uh, to start, I'll introduce myself, uh, Jeff Upton. I co-chair the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. I'm Jack Davey, and I'm the secretary and the co-chair. John Pareski of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. And Ken Cutterback, school committee rep to the Capital Planning Committee. <clears throat> Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I think the easiest way to start that is just by going through with the, with the handout. Sure. And I know we've done this a few times before. There has been a few uh, you know, minor updates, uh, not so much changes, but updates. And once again, let's start with uh, the year 2019, which is this year. Mm -hmm. And just a quick update. After the annual town meeting in April of 2019 here, we've had three special town meetings that required us to address requests that have come to the Capital Improvement Committee. And we have done that. And they have been reviewed, recommended. The most recent was just the other night at our last special town meeting. Monday evening for a million dollars for the wastewater treatment plant. So if we go down through the columns here very quickly, you'll see that the total amount for the for this fiscal year spending is already one million one hundred and seventy three thousand four hundred dollars. And that, as I say, includes the one million that was just uh, voted at special town meeting here uh, Monday evening. Uh, I don't believe that we have to go through and break down each one of those unless people want to, or if anybody has any questions, we'd be more than happy to address them. So if no questions or comments, then we'll move on to uh, FY 2020. And the request on the left-hand column, we did have 12, 12 requests. And out of the 12 requests, uh, nine of them we recommended. One request was withdrawn. And then there is an item in there that was not requested, but we did put in uh, for an anticipated uh, possible cost, and we will address that in a minute. If we go down through uh, with the request, the roadside mower of $26,000, that's through the Eversource company. And just to make note of that, that the Eversource does reimburse that $26,000 on an annual basis for the mower. And this is a third year of a five-year plan at the end of the five years. So this will happen for two more years. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the five years, the mower will be owned by uh, the town of Deerfield. Then we have a request from the uh, highway department for $40,000 to replace a pickup truck and the pickup truck had eight foot plow on it. They're looking to upgrade the pickup truck to a F-350 with a nine foot plow. And that was for the purpose of obviously they're plowing streets with it. And with the eight foot plow and smaller pickup truck, it just takes a beating. Uh, it makes it very difficult. So 
we we did recommend as a committee it seemed to make sense to upgrade to a little bit bigger uh, vehicle okay. for what they were using it for uh, they had requested 66,000 for a mini excavator uh, we did not recommend that at the time for a committee it may be a little confusing but it does show up in the 2023 year uh, in the capital plan we felt that uh, or some of us felt on the committee that it might be a good idea to at least keep it in there to reassess it down the road yep. and then there was a forty thousand dollar request for the town common slash complete streets program Thanks is how we that. ended up labeling that and uh that request came in a little late but we worked through it as a committee and uh, we did recommend that there is a thirteen thousand five hundred dollar request for the motorcycle as far as uh, the lease to complete the buyout of that lease and that uh, the committee did not recommend and uh, once again we'll let town floor decide that okay. obviously and then as far as uh, the radios there's a radio upgrade requested by the police department and that was for forty five thousand dollars going from a 400 to an 800 uh, MHZ system and basically they're they're upgrading the whole system throughout the state and this hopefully will give better reception throughout the state improved communications all the way through uh, a little bit a little bit quicker uh, response as far as the communications go and so we did recommend that as a committee there's a skims request for 243,000 for a new ambulance and that does come out of the retained earnings we did recommend that the uh, I was asked at the Finance Committee and I had reviewed that for a while as far as the ambulance last night of why the 243 because it had been a little more costly in the past uh the trade in value for the international is being applied to the cost in that trade in value on the request form was seven thousand dollars also to build out an ambulance with special equipment is usually additional money too but fortunately we are able to transfer uh a lot of that specialty equipment yep. like the power cots and that <clears throat> into the new ambulance at no cost so that's Great. why you'll see a little less monies on the $243,000 request, just to clarify that. Thank you. And as I said, that does, that does come from retained earnings. Uh, we get to the Deerfield Elementary School, and we have for hardware replacement, <coughs> for hardware replacement, $12,500. We have restroom renovations, and this is just a four part mm -hmm. of the four main uh, restrooms of 15-3. We had a request for replacing flooring of 15-5. And then uh, gym, gym floor 15-5, yeah, right? Excuse yep. me, gym floor 15-5. And then the flooring is uh, 18,000. Yeah. Those, all those requests uh, we did recommend. Uh, again, it's a town asset and uh we just thought it would be a good investment to make sure that we try to keep buildings up to date mm. uh are in tough we're, shape we're trying to learn a lesson here uh as we see with the towns there's some buildings that we haven't we haven't maintained probably the way we should mm -hmm. and yep. as you neglect them they get more expensive when you finally do address it so yep. so the school has a, a plan to spend relatively small amounts of money over a period of years which you'll see if if you go along to going forward 2021 and uh, right and going forward so to going ta forward tackle a few bathrooms at a time and yes a few floors at yeah. a time we've yeah. been doing the flooring yeah. and the door hardware for we the as last a few years we decide we're voting uh on an annual basis even though there may be projects that might be three four five years 
because we, as a committee, realize that we have some large dollar amounts coming down the road, yeah. and we want to make sure that money's there before we try to make recommendations. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. So, So that puts us in a situation of uh, the last item that was not requested, and it's a moving target, as we just heard the select board discussing, is what are we going to do for FY 2020 mm -hmm. as far as wastewater treatment plant? And one of our members came up with a good idea as far as using the cash flow schedule because otherwise we're just throwing darts at it. Yeah. Like Prickett. And right. Yeah, Prickett. From, right. From David Prickett's consultant firm. Yeah. And, uh, and so you see the, the sum there of $955,760. And we did have quite a bit of discussion mm -hmm. on that as far as a committee. We didn't know whether to include that, not to include it. Uh, I guess as a committee, our job is to try to anticipate mm -hmm. costs that are coming down the road. So this one was a little difficult. If we include that, we have a total for FY 2020 of $1,411,000, uh, excuse me, one million four hundred and eleven. excuse me, one million four hundred. Four hundred eleven hundred sixty. I'll get it in a second. <laughs> One million four hundred eleven thousand right. eleven thousand and sixty sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. <laughs> Excuse so me. Big, it's hard to say. I've been dealing with too many numbers. This don't feel, too don't, crazy. Don't no. feel bad, bad, Jeff. It takes my breath away too. <laughs> right, yeah, it does. It, it definitely does. So, uh, so with that being said, a couple of things. We I just want to finance. say thank you for understanding that we do have to incorporate the sewer treatment plant, but we're just not sure of the game plan at the moment, other than the big overall picture. Right. So thank you. How, how, the, how the expenditures will lay out, depending on what we do for right. what, what we, we get, get for, for a loan or how, how it comes out. But it's smart, it, it is a smart idea that you guys have done to anticipate that there may be that cost there in 2020. It may not get pushed out to 2021. We may need to get those plans started right. sooner if we get the assessments back and everybody agrees that that phase one is the way we want to go. Well, for for timing, for our purpose as a committee, we were supposed to be locking locking up this five-year plan and being done with it. Obviously, you as a select board and sewer commissioners, you have a little more time to deal with before annual town meeting yep. than, than we do. I know right. a little, I said. Yep. So we felt we had to do something one way or the other here. And if, if you deem to amend this plan, mm -hmm. that's fine. And right. you can do that on the floor. Well, we, we may not hear anything from the USDA in time. That's what we're right. kind of hoping. So we'll have a more of an indication, but right. But that, I don't know. I know. Obviously, right. we're going to yeah. have to leave that up to yeah. We'll up we'll, to we'll, we'd notify you if we're going to change committee. it. Your committee, right? Uh, we did have a finance committee meeting last night. The finance committee, and and we were dealing with several budget issues, so we did that, did not have time to get through the entire capital improvement committee. Okay. Uh, schedule here as mm -hmm. far as a five-year plan so what they did approve to recommend what they voted last night was four hundred and fifty five thousand three hundred dollars that is the items that you see in the FY 2020 without that are recommended by the by the capital improvement committee without the nine hundred and fifty five dollars uh, nine excuse me nine hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars so they did not include that also they did not and we it simply we didn't have time to discuss it it's mm -hmm. that's where that stands also we did not have time to discuss our request from 
the capital improvement recommending uh, 255000 to be transferred to the capital stabilization fund. That that's, will be discussed with the finance committee too. Uh, that's what we you're just, recommending, your board's recommending We, to we move, just didn't to have move time. Some. We yeah. are recommending that only pending available funds. Mm -hmm. uh, we were a little hesitant on that. Again, it was quite a discussion with, within the committee members. Uh, the original idea was to fund that stabilization fund for four or five uh, continuous years to build up a dollar amount in there. So if we start to uh, hit against the wall as far as our regular budget not not being able to uh, fund any capital projects, at least there'd be some money there uh, in a stabilization fund that we could reach out to. Mm -hmm. But we also know, and it was quite a discussion with the committee, as I say, we also realize that uh, money is going to be very tight in the next few years here. And if it's available, fine. If it's not, completely understand. So that, once again, is going to fall to uh, the Finance Committee for a recommendation or a non-recommendation, and then back to the Select Board. So it, it does move on to you. Uh, just, just to continue on here very quickly so people are aware, in 2021, 22, 23, and 24, when you look at the bottom lines here as far as totals with anticipated cost, there are some very large numbers. You're over 13 million in 2021, almost 6 million in 2022, about a million in 2023, and about 4 million in 2024. That's a lot of money being spent or being requested anyway, <coughs> the potential. $24,134,407. Right. Very good. <laughs> Roughly? Roughly. Right on the money. Right. Not, not counting interest. <laughs> right. It's true. <laughs> that also doesn't count uh, we don't the even know capital how. request from Frontier Regional for this, this coming year in the 2020, which I believe that's like about a 1.8 million uh, request. Request to all the towns. Right, yeah. for all the towns. So our part would be a little under a million. Mm -hmm. was, that, so, was that for consecutive years too? <clears throat> My memory was like, it wasn't just it was this year. I don't know it if was it gonna was. Go ahead. I thought it was a multi-year plan. It yeah, is going to be is, a 10 year, 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 yes, year, year plan. Yes, it is a multi-year. So yep. this is. I don't know what the dollar amount going forward is, but this is the beginning. Right, this yeah. is the beginning. Mm -hmm. oh, well, well, this is not Frontier Regional. Though. No, I right. understand. No, no, just saying on top. We haven't included in that. To, yeah. the, the, the library amount, too, is only contingent. I mean, the interesting thing there is that that's, that would happen only if it were half of it. Do you see what I'm saying? Like the $8,000, speaking of the big round, $8 million. Yeah, right, $8 million. <laughs> Grant request that would be matched, so it's actually in round numbers four million. Right, um, right, right. Out of our but that would be the out request, of our pockets. and so then right. would. Request, right. I mean, it's a budgetary thing. Two or budget. twenty million. Right. right. We we would <laughs> have to we would have to we would have to fund the eight Correct. million to start, and then and it would be reimbursed four million. And right. uh, Candace did send me an email to give me a little update on that. They are, I believe it's seventh on the list right now as far as the funding source. And that could be a, you know, a matter of uh, a couple of years here right. where that could well, be rewarded. And they could be looking you know, for money at any, any given time. So once again, they, the library didn't, did not put a request in this year. But you're just. They had, they had uh, the previous year. Yes. And we just asked them to hold that for a bit because we thought it was a little premature. And yeah. as it worked out, it, it was. was. But at the same time, this is a cost that uh, the community obviously felt we need to anticipate mm -hmm. because it is there 
and and we do not want to ignore it and all of a sudden say surprise. So we're we're trying to be uh, as thorough as we can with some of the moving targets that we have. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the senior center is another. Uh, it hasn't even listed anything. That's very difficult. Plus yeah. the church. Yeah. So there's some dollar amounts there. Is it a true reflection of what we're going to I need know. to spend? It, it probably isn't. That's but a good start. Once again, we we want to keep it on the forefront. At least have it in in the plan. So if if and when these things come up, people have will seen be them aware before. of them. Yeah. Right. It won't right. it won't catch us blindside us. None of these have been for 2021 and forward. None of these have been approved or, or disapproved right. by the capital planning it's committee. Just viewing it. It's yep. just things that might come along. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Just anticipate. Is there? Yes, I, I, I'm, I, it's very nice to have this laid out so that you can try to anticipate as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from anybody or? I just uh, to emphasize the sewer upgrades, mm -hmm. um, the big numbers, the millions, that does not reflect any grants we might get. Correct. All right, yeah, right. it's just you, a John. total cost. Yeah. For our cost. Thank you. And once so, again, I would just like to thank all the committee members here. Uh, it was a little bit of a frustrating year, I think, for for most of us. But it's a good team. We worked well together, and I appreciate everybody's efforts. And again, I, I just want to thank you because you everyone was very understanding of this whole sewer business. And hopefully, we'll have some more meetings soon. <laughs> and uh, once the finance committee is meeting next Tuesday, I believe it's the 19th, and hopefully we'll be able to address uh, that wastewater treatment number for FY 2020 and also the 250,000 uh, request. Okay. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully we'll have time to be able to at least address them as far as a finance committee in either recommend or not recommend. Okay. okay great. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Anyone in the public audience have any questions for about anything we discussed? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Very right, thank you very much appreciated. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you. So the hearing's closed? I guess I would yes. um, say, yes. we'll yeah. oh, say I make a motion we close the hearing. There you go. Second, that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Yep. So, thank you, Rachel. I would say that also just to take their um, recommendation under advisement until mm -hmm. you finalize. Sure. Right. That's um, a good because idea. they have, um, you know, given you basically a number that. Right. All yeah. right. We will take these under advisement and uh, consider it going forward. Sounds good. I'll try awesome. to get more answers from Dave in the next couple thank days. Uh, the next item on our agenda, oops, excuse me, is a proposed zoning bylaw changes received pursuant to Chapter 40A, Section 5. Yep. You guys had a chance to. I I looked slightly, but I need some education because this is out of the dark for me. I'm not. I didn't know we were making changes to the zoning. So well, it's a proposal, and I th okay. I, I think it's it's up to. Um, th it, this is primarily uh, an act for the planning board. Uh, to deal with, so okay. we can just take it under advisement and move it forward to. Yeah, well, can you? Oh, sorry. Can you explain it yeah. so I can? Um, one, Tim and uh, or Lily, whoever wants to come up and talk about this. I also would like to mention too that um, that so you have in front of you. I included um, the petition. So there's a petition. Yep. Um, yeah. And I included that. Um, sorry. The citizens right. article. Right. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just saying, so you have, in, in, in addition to, so you have the petition, the petition with the articles that, um, that Tim's going to speak up. But I wanted to mention that Chris Curtis has been working with the town on a grant through the MVP program. And he has some draft um, 
law, bylaws as well that we've made commitments to um, the, the grant it's an outcome of the grant to get these things moving toward the planning board so he didn't have them available to give you a draft of those tonight but he would like those to be also considered to be moved to the planning board if if you would so deem okay. it okay. to be appropriate okay. so right. should we um, inc include them I you're gonna bring them up next week well uh, Chris he gave me uh, no I mean we we could just say that like we could to, move them on to the planning board. If, if you would be so inclined. He didn't. He said, um, he had actually said he talked to Tim. Um, they'd like to collaborate on the two cha proposed changes that he's talking about. Um, but they were basically, uh, had to do with some of the environmental regulations in the current zoning bylaw and some floodplain regulations, but just minor, you know, some minor changes, some language. The environmental, right. I think, is a little more substantive, would maybe change the context a little bit. So, um, but, but he's, I think Chris is feeling that if you're going to move these other ones forward, it would make sense to try to look at them collaboratively if possible. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking to move forward? The Chris Curtis's and the citizens petition article that um, Tim and Lily can talk about. Um, we're going to move, recommend moving them on to the planning board for review. Because oh, it's not really, I mean, we're not a regulatory right. Right. body, but we, we recommend I, I the planning the, board look at I them, I guess. The sort of the saw that primer again. in there, how yep. you do it. So basically I what they're asking you, you it. it's the initiation. So right. they're asking you to initiate the process under 40A chapter of Section 5 um, that you'd send it to the plan board. So. And I just want to know the meat and potatoes. What are we looking to change? <laughs> What's my job? Yeah, That's what, what are we talking about here? <laughs> so, it's mostly laid out at the top. Yeah, yeah, and it's small print. Yeah. Um, uh, do you want to speak to that, Tim? Sure. Um, Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. Lily Dwight, 45 South Mill River Road. Um, this is actually... Um, sort of something that came out of the last annual town meeting, the Bloody Brook discussions that we had um, about all the problems that the town was looking to address through the M Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, Preparedness Program, program. Yep. and the uh, Climate Resiliency Programs that the state's encouraging towns to adopt. And um, basically we were going to encourage you to move it along to the planning board so they could hold a public hearing so people could become informed about what we consider to be a, a small but um, in a, a step to encourage people to use low impact development technology when they do larger projects. So um, the first thing that we wanted to make sure is that we didn't affect anything that could be done by right. So mm -hmm. it, if somebody came to uh, the planning board or, or the select board or whatever committee that they would have to go to with a by right project, this has no effect on them whatsoever. Um, all of this the, um, all of the requirements of the current law would stay in force. Um, it also encourages, uh, well, um, once it reaches a, a, a time where a project needs special permits, then we would be asking that the amount of land that could be covered by impervious surfaces would be reduced from what's currently allowed um, under C1 and C2. I think there are... Um, 60% uh, to 30%, which would bring it in line with uh, what's currently available with residential agriculture. Um, I've done a bunch of calculations about this. So for instance, um, if somebody had a two acre, two acre lot or you know, one acre lot, let's use a one acre lot, that's approximately 43,500 square feet. So a 4,000 square foot building, um, 30% of that would be approximately 13,000 square feet. So a 4,000 square foot building would be an impervious surface and that would leave another 9,000 square feet for parking and for access and so forth. So this probably wouldn't even have an effect on, on a one acre project. And going forward, multiplying that up, it only comes into play when you're talking about a really large building, like a 30,000 square foot building, where that would probably occupy the 30% on a, on a two acre lot. At that point, it would encourage people to use pervious pavers, pervious pavement materials, and other materials like that to do the parking infrastructure. And the advantage of that is 
that it allows the water to go directly into the ground like it would if nothing was developed there. It might even um, reduce the amount of money a, a contractor or a developer would have to spend on water retention ponds and those sorts of infrastructure projects. So it would, it would be a more natural way for this stuff, uh, for, for um, rain to be absorbed into the ground. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the seminars that I, I um, attended at the uh, Massachusetts uh, Association of Conservation Commission members uh, was about this whole concept of nature-based solutions to climate resiliency. So it's, it's a way to show that um, the town is aware of these issues and that in large projects it would encourage um, and maybe give the tools to the planning board or the ZBA to require large developments to use these kinds of technologies because as we know, we live in a pretty wet area and particularly in the lower lying parts of Deerfield. So this was an attempt to address those. And obviously uh, we haven't necessarily anticipated everything, but uh, that's why we want this to go to the planning board and give them a chance to you know, Discuss follow it. through with the 40, chapter 40 requirements of holding public hearings and discussing this. I guess what I'd like to kind of add is that uh, with the concerns about um, the size of the building and the water leaching into the soil, I don't know if you are aware of, but I just, just for information, mm -hmm. uh, what happened at the planning board meeting with the approval of the lat or the marijuana uh, grow facility on uh, Mill Village Road, we learned a hard lesson. So I'll put that lesson into application. Say there was a parcel of land on Route 5. Mm -hmm. That was one acre of land, 43,000 square foot. And the way that worked, they could build a building that's 43,000 square feet. They could go to the farmer behind it, say to the farmer, look it, I want to buy your land. You can farm it for the rest of your life, but we're going to claim it as ours. And now that farmland, that's always was farmland, is going to continue to be farmland, is now counted in this yeah. pervious service. Yeah. So you've got that one acre of land covered by a one acre building, and that's the way around all of this. And I, I would, I'm going to work to try to adjust that so that doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. You that know, that sounds like a legal strategy to create an A&R and... and um, that's what they did, yeah, you know, yeah. and we had our town council work on it, and I think they had three lawyers here all at one time, and they laid out exactly how it is, and, you know, we, <laughs> we reached out to, what's the acronym for the conservation A&R people? D-A-R. D-A-R, yeah. You know, and uh, their response was disappointing because they basically took no position, except for that they weren't going to acquire the rights back, so they say, all right, just mm -hmm. let it go. I don't think necessarily they were happy with it, right. but they didn't interject anything. So even though it, I felt that it violated some of our zoning That's laws because, you yeah. know, the lots were so jagged. I mean, we were talking 11 or 12 acres of land, and there was only a 75-foot parcel where that property line existed. It was even pointed out they didn't even have to come back for an a &R. All they had to do was draft a plan and get rid of that line and file the registry of deeds and didn't have to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think I was at those meetings. And yeah. so that's a legal, um, a legal thing that uh, I guess that's what lawyers get paid for, to figure out ways <laughs> to get around things. Um, yeah. But we, we, we just uh, felt that this was a, a small step in a direction that I know the town wants to move in. And um, as far I as- I was just gonna say, we had a really, really good meeting. It was an exciting meeting this morning for creating resilient communities. and. One of the things that came out of that is we're trying to, we've been meeting since December of 2011, since the Irene damage. And um, we decided as a group that what we wanted to do was do the next step because we were, we're sort of, we were generating a lot of good things. And then, uh, you know, we sort of hit a ceiling. So what the next step is, we're meeting again in another month is trying to, or another six weeks, I think, is come up with a community sustainability plan 2030, mm -hmm. thinking that we only have the next decade for action. And so what do we do on the local level to make our communities more sustainable? That means economic development, but sustainable economic development so people choose to live here, can raise a family here, but buy and support local businesses and 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 build sustainably 
so that we can manage um, manage climate change. Mm -hmm. And so my thought that I was just going to throw out for putting on the agenda like next week and trying to come up once we get through town meeting is to tr meet with the energy committee and try to have a public forum of some sort where everyone comes together and we try to think of win-win solutions and an action plan that we as a community can move forward in the next 10 years. We have a 10 year, we try to come up with a 10 year game plan and um, you know, and we fund it through, you know, different, there was different opportunities we had talked about, but we can fund, if we have the vision, I, I'm sure the money will come. And part of this is, and it's kind of exciting because this fits in with that Green Works Resilience um, Communities Investment Plan that DeLeo is pushing. Mm -hmm. And that money will be there. So what we need to do as a community um, is figure out how do we, it's, it's a guaranteed $100 million every year for the next 10 years. So how do we tap into that $100 million to make our community sustainable? People can live and work here and afford to live here. Mm -hmm. And that, that, because where we're headed just isn't, I mean, all you have to do is turn on the TV and know it's just not good. So yeah. well, what are we going to do? And, and so we just bring people together and figure out how we're going to do this. How do we keep people in the community? How do we keep our elders in the community? How do we keep young families in the community? And how do we support local businesses? And what local businesses do we want? Mm -hmm. Try to identify what local businesses and what do we have to do to each of us as recycle more, reduce our uh, carbon footprint, and do all these exciting things. And I, and I just... We got 10 years, mm -hmm. and, and then climate run. change is going to happen, <laughs> and it's too right. late. So how do we, as a local community, lead this? So mm -hmm. anyway, I'm so, sorry, well, can I but just, this sort of yeah. Can I just ask, so in. what are the in, uh, unintended consequences of, of changing it from 60 to 30 percent? How does that affect, say, Dumont when they came in? Would that, well, would that hold that's them out? not it's C1 very or C2. It, it's C1, C2. It only, it only affects um, a sp specific subset of potential businesses and potential developments. And some of these, some of these uh, potential uses would be probably from, you know, national or mu multinational companies who have resources and um, can e easily afford to use uh, a low impact development technology product, um, whereas a local business person might find that a burden. Mm -hmm. and, and as I've tried to point out in doing the math, a lot of this um, wouldn't even necessarily affect large companies. It, it, it would just say, if you are going to build something that's really big, then the town has a vested interest in requiring you to use low impact development technology by saying, once you reach a certain size, you can't cover everything with a, an impervious surface. Uh, one of the things that sort of is a, an, an example of what we're speaking about is uh, the um, self-storage facility that was built in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you watched, they've had a lot of water problems at the front of that building, and I'm not sure what that, what that they probably found a resolution for it. Um, but that lot is pretty well covered um, with the exception of pavers, the pavers, the pavers allow water to go through. So that's an example where they may have met the 60% level, mm -hmm. um, but they used the pavers so that people could still access the facility um, and have a solid footing to walk on and so right. forth. Um, this might have impacted that to require them to use more impervious pavers, but I don't know if that was the case. But right. uh, this right. would be going forward and not looking backwards in any yep. case. So. Um, I, and I actually think that uh, Yankee Candle might use some of these pervious pavers in, in a lot of their, their settings. So they, they're already using these technologies, but this would give town boards an opportunity to say, for this large project, you need to do this because it's better for the environment and it's better for our resiliency and so forth. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, there's several articles here. Well, they, they all basically, you know, as, as, as articles often happen, you, you state the purpose of the thing. And, and this one would be to put a notation into the, the use, the, the use grid. So yep. It's like, in the table. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yep. Yeah, so like, for instance, um, there are already two, two uh, things in this um, 
if we, if we looked on uh, another asterisk section 4800 <laughs> 4, uh, the, where it talks about um, retail sales or rental with without display outdoors building 4,000 square foot or less of enclosed area by right you can do it in C1 and 2 and that wouldn't change but there are these little footnote notations four and five which then say you know has to be 75 feet if the street providing frontage is a state highway and then it says 75 feet of property abutting the rear yard is a residential uh, agricultural district. So this would just be a third one that would be added there saying once you go beyond yeah. and it wouldn't affect, it wouldn't affect the, the buy right use. Okay. So I, I, what we're asking is if you would approve this to be reviewed by the planning board. Which yeah, is the next yeah, step. We'll for, for, yeah. go forward with that. I, but Thanks. some of the, something to give you to think about is here, you know, you limit that to 4,000 square feet. Now, it doesn't say of land coverage. That's an important factor. Because oh. what if I wanted to build a building that was 8,000 square feet, Whoa. but it was only two, it was two stories, you know? Well, no, what it talks about is um, it, it references the, uh, the, the dimensional use. Yep. And dimensional use gives the restrictions on pervious, sur impervious surfaces. So I get that. But yeah. years ago, when I think the bylaws were a little more correct, they talked about footprint. Mm -hmm. That's the important thing. It's because of how much land you're covering. How much square footage the building, I think, is a bit immaterial. Because, because you can do multiple layers. Can do multiple layers. Sure. So yeah. if somebody wanted to have a 12,000 square foot building on an acre lot, it but it was yeah. within our bylaws to go three stories, Right. It would be we have all a 35, right. 35 our, the goal here is to protect, you know, the coverage, the mm. impervious surface, whether it be a building or parking or whatever. So yeah. So yeah. this 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 actually refers to um, adding a footnote that says saw, yeah. says in cases where a special permit is required, the maximum lot coverage by impervious Basis. surfaces percentage outlined in Article Two, Section Two Thirty uh, Twenty Three Hundred Dimensional Requirements shall be reduced to 30% from 60%. So that refers to this uh, um, principal use and the section 2300, um, which is, is, is it's clear. So it uses says, the term coverage, which is not footprint, but I think it's pretty, Yeah, it's it says max, so maximum lot coverage by impervious surface. And you're, you're absolutely correct. It doesn't, doesn't address the question of could you build a, a, a mile high st a building. Um, but I think that well, we have we're a limited to 35 feet. By 35, now. exactly. <laughs> so, you know, um, but it does talk about buildings, parking areas, walkways, and other impervious surfaces. Sure. And then it says low impact development, which we're trying to encourage, uh, such as pervious pavers, do not count as impervious surface. Are, you, are we still 35 feet? I thought we were, when we were dealing with that tower thing. Yeah, so it was supposed to be 50, but it, no, it's still, it's still 35. It's still at that. Okay. Then but start. then I could bring my friend in here. Uh, and I can't believe I'm going to discuss this, but the mosquito things. You, <laughs> you, you have a situation, you have a situation where, like when Cumberland Farms was built, you know, that area, I've been here a long time, it was always wet to a certain degree, but there was never a lot of water. If you get a rainy period, yeah, you see standing water, I don't know, it might be five, six, but it would leach in. But for them to comply with this, they actually had to build a pond, and yeah. there's it's a pond there all the time, and it's going to be there all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, we got to deal with the mosquito aspect of mm -hmm. it because now, now we, we have, have to treat it standing water. You know. Yeah, it's the challenge of the wet, yeah. the wet, and trying to allow buildings to be built in in areas which are marginal development yep. potential right. um, is a problem that we're going to continue to face. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Next I guess oh, so. Oh, so we so have a motion on the table to <laughs> yeah. move this on. Okay. I just would, I wanted to ask them a question, but go ahead. I'll oh, let you no, I'm sorry. I just well, wanted to make sure we vote, actually voted, because we, yeah. I made the motion, Trevor seconded it. You seconded it? I did. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. So we'll send this along. I guess I just want to be clear, because the avenue for which you did the initiation, I think you and I talked a little bit about, you did petition these articles to town meeting. Um, obviously, they wouldn't go to town meeting without going through the 40A process right. with the planning board. So I guess the question is, I don't want to be in, I don't want to not act accordingly in getting the petition to town meeting, but are you satisfied that that this is the, you know. This is the way that we, the way that you yeah, I, like there, to there are, the law is pretty specific about what needs to happen. Right. And you're moving it along as the first step. 
the planning board then would get it. Now, right. what constitutes receiving it from you, I don't right. have. Right, you know, and so then you and I should talk. Well, yeah. because I know John, I John, saw John Wade today, and John is going to actually be gone away in right. the country, I believe. And I think Rachel's also, I think right. Rachel was here earlier, but she's also right. away. So I don't know when their next meeting is. Um, but yes, then I would presume that he's already received these anyway, but I would, um, the planning board had received them right. directly too. So, um, but we would, I would let him know they voted and they've been moved along to him. When they're going to meet next, I can't right. get it before. I, don't. I mean, they usually meet the first Monday of, of, of each month, but they, they may not have something scheduled. Right. Um, right. But They've just got over the We understand that this may or may not get onto yeah. the town warrant. But yeah. it, as long yeah. as you're moving it forward. Yeah. Right. It's, and, and it's highly unlikely, to yeah. be very frank with you, because yeah. I'm, I really need to be close. You know, I, I want in two weeks for them to be reviewing basically the warrant. And, right. And so right. to try to get that done in two weeks would be. Right, and uh, cool. you know, even if we thought that the planning board was going to accept this and move it forward, and you put a placeholder in the warrant, right. um, you know, we we recognize that we got to this a little late, a little late but <laughs> it's now going to be in front of the planning board. So even if it doesn't make this, the planning board will have an opportunity to look at it, hold a public hearing about it, and yep. decide Absolutely. whether it's yep. something that when we do. When the planning do. board votes on it. And, and you have a public hearing and the planning board votes on it. Right. Until it's actually voted down by town meeting, it, it is considered in force. Yeah. So it does have the same um, what, weight. What's that? I don't really understand what you're saying. You're saying that it when you When the effect. planning board ad, uh, has a public hearing and, and, and approves it. whatever the zone is to go to, that needs to go to a town meeting vote, until a town meeting vote votes it down or approves it, it is in for, it's technically in force. I thought it was after town meeting voted it, it goes back to the time, perhaps. But I don't think that it becomes in force until it's voted at town meeting. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, just verify yeah, we'll that. In years that. past, sure in years past when I was on the planning board, if you proposed something like stormwater regulations and, and it was moving forward, until it got actually voted down, then those were considered the regulations. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I, I maybe don't. with regulations, but with this, with zoning bylaws, it has to have a town meeting vote before. And approved by well, and the attorney and general, general, right? I yes, remember before it can be in effect. I I, that's how I understand it. Right. Well, we'll get three or clarification four on that. At least it's moving forward. Thank forward. you very much. The yeah. frontage of building lots, and I had subdivided some land after that, and it wasn't enforceable until they actually changed it. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It could, it could be go back. Okay, next item is a town administrator's report. Yes, okay. All right. Well, cool. I have been putting something in writing, which I do have, <coughs> but I had um, not updated my current draft, so I didn't give you um, written copies, but let me, what did I just do? I printed it a couple times, and for some reason I keep saying, okay, great. Okay, so basically I think we already talked about most of the things coming for town meeting, the budget. I just want to give you a quick update on the budget timing. So mm -hmm. as I said, we I had asked the, uh, the library folks to come and talk about the staffing hours, which the finance committee had sort of put back to you guys to yes. make sure that you were in agreement of increasing or changing the uh, staff hours at the library. They were going to come tonight, but they had to reschedule to next week. So they also have to go back in front of the the, um, the Finance Committee, and the Finance Committee also, I do not believe, has voted the Frontier Budget either. So there's a few things the Finance Committee has left to vote, mm -hmm. and those are all going to go back to the Finance Committee on March 26th, is my understanding. So you're going to meet with the library folks next week on the 20th. The, fin uh, the Finance Committee is going to wrap up their process on March 26th, and then I was planning to have you a draft budget package you know, town meeting package for April 3rd. Okay. Um, and and then, when are we going to get all the Frontiers things? I mean, that's, I think that's a big thing for We have deal. Frontiers budget, so I think, we um, have their capital. I, think I can they give had you copies of that up. if you haven't. I think it was in your budget. Was it? We handed them out in the budget speak? packets, I think, last The capital time. request are you talking about? Yeah. I know that oh, they, the they can't request. formally vote on that until I want to say, it April. was a little bit in, into April, April because Correct. it had to be because of everybody each town's town meeting they had to have a specific like 30 days oh, yeah. so it kind of fell it fell into the end of 
or the beginning of April sometime. Right. So basically, the, the, if you're talking just about the capital article, Kip, yeah. I'm not sure if you're talking about that, the whole no, budget. That's where the capital yeah. article, the IMA, the Intermunicipal Agreement uh, for Frontier is silent on capital. So they have to take the town meeting vote for the capital to every town's town meeting. Right. So they're going to be doing that, and then we've gotten that article, and that will be on your town meeting. Um, and then once that, that's an authorization to borrow. If that passes all four towns, then they have that authorization to borrow the $1.8 million. That needed million to have, dollars. Did it have to pass a majority of the towns or all the towns? It has to it pass every, every town. town. Every town. So our, because our share from the one I have, the 10 year plan is 1.9, uh, 1,999,000. 1,903 dollars, which is our share. Does it, does it break I it have, down to like, you know, and I always like when the assessors come because that way they can explain to people, look at this is going to impact so are your they taxes going, $100 per thousand. Are they well, going, I think, so I think are they going decision, to ask us for the 1.9? I think they're going to ask for borrowing of them 1.9, but they're going to ask, you can see per each right. year, they're going to ask for maybe, what is Was it? Was it 137 right. in the first right. year? So, so they're right. going to ask you, all the and towns have to approve the authorization to borrow. Once they borrow, you will get an assessment, just like you but get. I think, think like a capital assessment. assessment. I think one yeah. of the questions we want to answer, though, is do we want to request from the um, CPA funds for our share of the track? Because that would help reduce, you know, our assessment every year, and we can move some of that money. Waitley's doing that. Sev I don't know how many other towns are planning to do that, but they're going to use some of their funding for the track. Um, to reduce the amount of money that they have to outlay every year. Okay, I before know, you start I, discussions on that, I think mm -hmm. that's an agenda item. I think you should put that on your agenda. So and, well, you're, and you're going I just to also, it in, I know, in there. And, and you're going to also have your CPC recommendations at some point, correct? Mm -hmm. So I just think that that's that that has been so, asked. Well, and except I, I I just want to throw out there that I the CPA process is going th forward right now. Correct. Correct. They're not asking and, this and year, or we're not asking this year, but I'm saying for, yeah. for 2021, I, however we want to decide to pay for this every year for the next 10 years, we want to decide do we want to take a portion of that CPA funding and put it towards that. Well, I, just again, we need to come up and think about this, but, you know, I've been really trying so hard. We really need senior housing in town, and so I've been this uh, 300,000 out of the CPA money is it like a year's amount that we mm -hmm. squirreled away. Yeah. And and that's a pretty big hit against well, the you fund. You can decide 100,000 or 200,000. Yeah. What I'm saying okay. is that some I mean, I know we don't it, have a proposal for senior housing right now, but No, we don't have a place for it. We I mean, for 20 years we've been hoping to do it. I know, I, mean, I know it's I a know, priority but, for all of us, but, but we, we don't have a, we don't money. have a place for it. We don't have the land I know, for it. There's I know. Or we could not build a track. <clears throat> What's that? Or we could not build a track. We, you could, but I don't think that's, well, it depends on how the vote goes at the meeting. But I'm just saying if it passes at town meeting, we, we would want to uh, discuss how we'd want to pay know. for that. I know. And I, that's it one just, option to help so reduce some of that. So what you're saying is that in the $1.8 million ask right now, the borrowing, that includes money for the track. It's and the tr so yes, it's a full cost. And so at some point, there could be monies that come against that money that would help offset it and reduce right. our repayment of that. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So that's good to know. know. So yeah. we can discuss that in the future. But I think that's a sensitive issue using that CP. Or not of sensitive, course. but it's a, it is. it's an important issue that people yep. might want to discuss. And senior housing, senior housing, you can Very also important. borrow yeah. against your look, your future yeah. CPA money. So if we got a developer who was going to build subsidized housing in, ta in town and they needed 2.6 million and we only had 1.6 in the kitty, then what we could do is you can borrow against it in the future or whatever. So, I mean, I just want to make sure that we, if we have the opportunity for senior housing that we actually can follow through. That's all. Okay. Okay. So, um, so budget. So budget. So I'll have that on. And my, like I said, my goal is for April third to have you in a position where you're, you know, you have a fine. Uh, you know, it, it's a draft, but a final draft of what's going to be presented at the at the town meeting. And I think you have to sign it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, the week after that, April tenth, if you were signing it, that'd be fine. If you know, we'll see yeah. how the timing is. But. Um, 
Uh, let's see. So, in addition to that, I did get the um, letter of support. I, I, was, I think I mentioned to Carolyn, and I don't know if I copied you, but I did get it over to John in, um, in the uh, Congressman McGovern's uh, office, and they, he did mention he could work with, uh, or I told him about working with Richard Neal's office. Mm -hmm. He also uh, suggested I send it to Warren and right. Senators Warren and. Um, yes, I gave you the name of the yep, people. Yeah, and so, um, yep. so well, he, and yeah, gave me that information. So that's gone and done and he will send us a copy when they're final so basically we sent him a, a like yep. a draft he'll put it on their letter letterhead he's going to send directly to usda but he'll also send us a copy right. um we've set up the 350th committee donation account as we mentioned last week um we are there is a mass general law that referenced setting up a celebration account so brenda and i are going to be talking tomorrow with dor just to make sure we're doing that all properly Good. so we can make sure all the funds are properly accounted for and expended properly. Um, debt exclusions we talked about. Um, transfer station hiring, we had, um, we we're in the process of checking references. We had a few little hiccups with that, but we've clarified that, so we're moving that along and that should be done uh, short, forthwith. Kevin is out uh, today and tomorrow, but hopefully next week he'll have that information and can proceed. Um, the, I'm going to put on March 20th the rebill, the, the frontier rebill issue for sewer. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I'm calling it, a rebill right. issue, because we actually haven't done a sewer commitment. So right. I would remind you, we're not really talking about an abatement with Frontier. We're talking They've about paid in full, right? we haven't sent them a bill for, for the second, second half. half. Right, Correct. because there's no point in you. We need to decide how we're going to bill them. There's no point in sending these bills and then doing the abatement. So, well, so we, we also we, have, so we have to, to we also have that. to address the abatements from um, that. We have piled up in our office. We have to. Officially... Well, you you have addressed them in the sense that you mm -hmm. have said that you're not doing any right. abatements for residential right now know, or irrigation. You just have continued to have a public, you know, pushback on that. So well, no, whether but we you haven't wanna... sent out letters saying that this is our policy. No, we did. We in fact did do that. Yes. Oh, you did to everybody okay. that we I'm had sorry. a letter that we had in the file. We did send a letter out for that. If okay. they've if they've so come everyone... since then, I don't. I can't say, but. The last time they went, the bills went out, the last commitment when we got all the requests for abatements, we did respond with a letter saying that okay. we weren't going to do them. So, But we've had folks, in all honesty, that have continued to ask about doing them. So I think, um, you know, either you say no and you stick to that as a policy or we continue to have dialogue about doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, but we do have to finalize the frontier sewer, you know, policy, or we have to deal I, with that I, because we, that's a bill. We need to get that money from them. They owe I, us that money. Maybe I should just um, recap on that. We've talked, you know, a couple of weeks ago about doing that. And um, the thought was to um, have frontier pay in full in the, in the springtime for their bill. And in the fall time, every October 1st, they give us the reading off the irrigation pipe, uh, that pump, and um, we have the reading already from last October, so we would um, abate the difference between the two. So whatever their total uses is and whatever went out to the field, yep. that will get abated. Um, there's discussion that that's a pretty, seems to be a low number. Um, so, you know, we have to just look at that. But I, I don't know how else we deal with that, whether you... We're, we're, well, concerned, we're concerned of the validity of the number because it seems comparable to residential use, which seems unreasonable. Mm -hmm. um, we're also concerned about just continuing to take money out of the sewer enterprise. And so that's what you're doing in this case. I'm not saying, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent you know, should or shouldn't. I'm just saying in, in terms of how you address these abatements, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that is- It affects a, a, everybody. It affects everybody. And so in this particular issue, it also is onerous in terms of, you know, we can't, we if you do this for Frontier and you're talking about doing this for farmers or for only other folks, only it becomes very onerous in how we maintain these things, mm -hmm. who reads them, who calculates the reductions. Um, it's a it's a it's an administrative challenge and, and whatnot. Well, well, so we I, just I, I, let me respond to that to real quick. Cautious about so that. <laughs> we are cautious about it. I my recommendation was only municipal buildings or um, agricultural that produces you know, commercial agricultural and has a secondary pipe at their own expense that went like a farm in town has a separate pipe 
only to fill their equipment to take out to the fields and irrigate. That wouldn't get charged down, down the sewer line. Any other use on that property would. Um, but um, not for residential houses, not for, you know, not for nonprofit organizations. It's really um, farming for our agriculture. They're using it specific, specifically for agriculture, and they have a separate line, separate pump for it, or a municipal building like our schools. And you'd, I think so you'd have to be different on agriculture. And, and I agree mm -hmm. with that. Most, most farmers, uh, there aren't a lot of farmers that are on town water. Correct. And, but there are some farmers that use town water, but the water department puts a meter right on the hydrant where they're irrigating. So we never see that bill anyways. Uh, that's just a water bill. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, I thought a lot about this frontier thing and, and you know, I, I kind of want to put it back on the school and say this, we could agree that every June 1st or 15th, and I, I'm not really clear, it doesn't matter, that, that frontier reads that irrigation meter, mm -hmm. sends a copy to buyers. Yes. Then on <coughs> September 1st, they send them another meter reading. So now we know what the summertime was. If they turn their uh, sprinklers on before June, which May is usually pretty wet, they're going to pay for it. If they run their sprinklers after September, which you're getting into cold weather, yeah, you might get a few dry weeks, but it's on them. And then there's no more argument. It's clear. We know what the meter reading was June 1st and September 1st. They don't pay for that irrigation through the summer. But anything else, it's just, and it's, it's just a matter of somebody taking two meter readings and sending the information to buy So the way we had it is they would take one meter reading and we, we debate everything. Right. But, but this would be more accurate because we'd know exactly what it was from this day. So, you know, everything well, else is just. The only thing, uh, one reading is accurate because you, only, you know everything that goes out to that field but there, doesn't go said, down the there sewer. Was some dis there's some discrepancy as to, you know, how, you know, when they take the meter reading and. Uh, well, we would know they would only take it one time October 1st, and we have their last October reading. So this October reading, we'd know every gallon that went through that pipe. Or a sprinkler. So that's the only, well, and that was making it easy on Barbara because she didn't have to calculate it both times, and then do, we just, we knew what that number was out to the field, and we knew what their total usage in was. Whether it's low or not, we could have just left it alone, would have been a different story, but yeah. that didn't happen. Right. So there was, everybody was talking about it, and that, here's where we are. But We um, are actually, they're paying less money. <laughs> could have left it alone, but um, it is what it is now, and so I just wanted to make sure that when we set a policy, and I'm hoping to do that very shortly. We we're hoping next week. <laughs> yeah, to vote on it next week um, would be, you know, and so maybe in the next week we'll have this, a little bit more discussion I'll have with you okay. and okay. other yeah. people to just yeah. make sure that that number, you know, because the worry, what I mean, it, fair is fair. If it doesn't sure. go out in the right. system, they shouldn't pay right. for it. Um, and we'll have to raise the rates anyways to cover the difference. But, um, but I think that, um, yeah, we just need to have it fair. And mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that, you know, it, it, it turns out the reading isn't less than a residential household because that doesn't seem accurate. Right. That's, so a, that's only a That's what concern. people are concerned of. It is very yeah. low. And, yeah. I, you know, I don't know how back. else to separate it. There's one line that goes out to there and there's one line that comes in. So whatever the difference is, is what's got flushed down right. the toilet. Well, if, in fact, it's all working properly, too, if all the readings Correct. are being done properly or the readings They want to maintain, uh, you know, every couple, three years you have it tested. I don't know. Yeah. And then I think you do have to, I understand what your position is on the rest of the uh, request for abatements and the irrigation pieces, but, you know, as you know, we have a couple citizens that are pretty, mm -hmm. uh, feel, when you use those words a couple times you just used, fair, equitable, mm -hmm. yep. parity, um, you know, they feel very strongly that when, when they're paying for, you know, the stuff that isn't going in the system and they know full well that they, it isn't, and it's, it's substantial in terms of if they have large gardens gardens or yep. large lawns, um, you know, they feel that there is not parity and, you know, that they're subsidizing the, the use. So they, even though they the, recognize that if you change it, you're going to have to raise fees. I've said that. And you they have, have to pay either way. And they have to way. pay their own. That's right. Put their but, own but pump still, in and they have to pay their own person know, to read but it. there's and, still just know, a sense of the, of the equity issue. That's all I'm saying. Money in the long run. I don't disagree. But I've seen some of those bills. They are pretty large. and. I tell you, if I was that person, I would pay a couple hundred dollars and get another meter. Yeah. You know, well, I'm not sure if we wouldn't allow that. Right. I'm not oh. sure if we were op offering that as an option. No, no, no. But it's, I would, but pay, it's a lot for, more than that. I would pay for a separate 
water line or something. Well, they could drill a well. Well, a lot of them don't have to drill much of a well. They no. just pound a point in the ground. <clears throat> um, the other issue is, um, you know, is, is, is water conservation. You know, a lot of times these houses are running these things when it's pouring rain out. It was wet beyond belief last year. And if anyone, I, had a, I have irrigation at my house. I never ran it, maybe one or two days. It rains constantly. I couldn't even mow my backyard. Yep. And, but, you know, there they are. <laughs> they're running 24-7 out there just every day. Whether it's raining or not, they're running. And, you know, that, there's some just, personal responsibility as well. But it's also anecdotal because I, I just want to, we're bringing water from the reservoir, Conway, here. Mm -hmm. And everybody's water table is rising. <laughs> so you're bringing in thousands of gallons and put, spreading it around <laughs> down here, and it's not going anywhere. Nope. So I'm it's just. It's going in Cumberland Farms Pond. I think, you, I think you guys agree. So, okay. We beat that. All right. Well, just, so, yeah. so March 20th, we will. Um, I, I just want I do want to say we will have that on the agenda because sure there's a lot of interest. So, that so I want to be clear. Okay. Um, okay. I am going to. Oh, that's. I'm going to schedule a department head meeting, which I. It's been about two months um, coming up on, and I'd like to do that. I have been super busy. Um, but I'm getting that going and be doing that in the next couple weeks. Um, the other thing I just want to mention, uh, th so the next few weeks I'll be committed mostly to annual town meeting, um, but I have been, you know, working with uh, or following along with the town buildings folks and, and supporting them. They've asked me to go to their next meeting. I'm um, going to meet with personnel next month. And I've when had is that next meeting, the building Town meeting? buildings. Um, I want to say the last week of March, Carolyn, I can't remember the exact date, but maybe March might be March 26th, the same as the FinCom meeting date, or that week, maybe the 28th. It's okay. the last week of March, I believe. Julie told me, but. Okay. Um, oh, I, I probably have it on my calendar. Um, and then um, a few things, you know, the personnel committee has, um, that I know Wendy was working on, and, and they're interested in moving forward. Um, but I'm, I am trying to stay kind of focused on a few things and getting the hiring, getting the positions filled, getting mm -hmm. town meeting done, I think, is party, getting the USDA stuff yes. done, the, the sewer, the, all that. And then I just want to f finish by um, saying about the, um, what Carolyn mentioned, and I think it's a really fabulous idea. And we've been talking about this. I've mentioned it at the FinCom meetings, and I've mentioned it to you all individually. And but but having a you know a, a bigger meeting, you know, she's talking about climate resiliency, but I loved how she connected it to economic development and and town resiliency mm -hmm. and how that is all meaningful. It's, and she's absolutely connected. right. It's one thousand percent like connected. And so I was sitting here. I feel like she was channeling it when she was saying it because I had written right before she started. This. It. What I think we should do after elections, if you if you feel inclined to do this, is really try to think about, you know, besides doing your own prioritization and stuff, think about having how you can organize a cohesive meeting, an all boards commission, all hands on deck meeting, you know, we are Deerfield, you know, whatever, however you want to frame it, um, to just kind of, you know, just to, just to start having these conversations. It's not going to be the end all be all, but kind of get everybody together and then decide, mm -hmm. you know, how to, how to keep these things going. But I think it's all part and parcel of what we've been talking about with the sustainability of the economy of Deerfield, mm -hmm. with the development pressures, you know, these, yep. these folks really want to have thoughtful development, but they it are, well. it is going to have an impact on, on what is going to come. I mean, they're telling you that. So, um, and, and, you know, we've talked about that more. I, I went to, for a walk this afternoon and I walked through Old Deerfield and I see a lot of new buildings over there. Mm -hmm. But as you've said, as we've talked about, that may not, you know, continue as well. Like we've been getting revenues from different places and, and all of those things, you know, we have to continue to look at and make sure they're sustainable. And, and so as part of your budget, um, you know, look, I want to give you some of that information. You can decide what you want to take to town meeting. I'm not going to push you to take any presentation in town meeting you don't want to, mm -hmm. but I think it is worth putting together something that kind of just illustrates this information as, as much as well, you, you feel comfortable I, I doing. think there's a huge urgency in climate change. We have, we have 10 years, basically. So I think Deerfield- 10 years to what? 10 years before it's too late to, to reverse anything. And so I think Deerfield 2030 is, is what mm -hmm. we should be talking about because right. we, we have this 
very compressed window. And I mean, 10 years sounds like a long time, but really 10 years is not long. And, and so right. I, I feel like if we, if we, tr if we all believe in our community. We all spend time here because we believe in our community. So we need to pull it together. We yeah. need for our kids and grandkids. Right. And, and, oh. and I think, wait a minute, before she, I, was like, I, I, I think exactly, I, I agree. I, but I want to say, I want to say, I think this. you have something in facing you over the next five to 10 years that is also critical in nature, yes, that is, is, that is related to that, is related to that, but it is the, the economic pressures that you have. You have admittedly put off mi multi million dollars worth of projects that are coming to bear. For decades. The, for decades so they're coming to face too. you in the next three to five to ten to twenty years and you have um, at the same time an idea that you want to you know shrink your you know your you want to have climate resiliency so that means you that's going to have an impact on development you have a big nonprofit um, fact you know piece of your community that is continue to grow when I came here a year ago it was less of a percentage of your tax base than it is in one year. It's already increased substantially, you know, it's mm -hmm. gone up percentages. So, so that in your tax rate, you know, it's shrinking your, your residential tax base and you have your, your, we've talked about layers of governance, you have your districts, you have your tax base, and in five, 10, 15 years, you're bumping up against the, the tax rate that's, that is how tolerable is that for people to be able to continue to afford to live here, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's what I think you guys should be looking at. And so I think Carolyn's piece of it is important, but as it impacts your economy, mm -hmm. especially, I we think is, is critical. So well, it's sustainability. Can people afford to live here? Exactly. And that's what we need. We need to make sure we're taking care of our that's elders right. and we're taking care of our young families. That's right. And everybody in between, because right. it, it right. it's important. Right, because we want to we want to be climate okay, conscious. Okay, so but along if those can't lines, live here, along but. those lines, <laughs> I asked Diana because I can't tomorrow mm -hmm. go to the MVP um, meeting, but there's an MVP meeting, and apparently what it is is another announcement for um, another round of grants. So we, I I I want Diana to talk about the flexibility how wonderful the program is because part of it is we have to go and say that it is a good program. But um, it's flexible, it's easy for us to use. We've been able to collect on every single round. We definitely want to get into the next round. But what came up this morning um, was, could you ask Diana if you could do a multi-town application? Because one of the things that we're looking at is opening up the watershed across borders to Vermont because here we've been focusing just on Massachusetts but everything whooshes down and Deerfield is absolutely at the bottom. So if we did a multi-town application, would they approve that as well? Obviously everyone has to be certified but I think Ashfield and um, Shelburne and I'm, uh, the FERCOG is working with four or five communities that are in the watershed, so. Isn't Northampton at the bottom, Northampton Hadley? That's the Connecticut, that's the Connecticut. This is the Deerfield, we're talking about the Deerfield River. They still experience a lot more and more frequent floods. Well, the Deerfield the watershed is part of the Connecticut watershed. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm talking about the Deerfield, <coughs> not, we're separate. I mean, I'm not continuing it down, but it is part of the Connecticut. This is a sub watershed, so um, <laughs> this is enough for me to deal with. I'm not picking up the whole Connecticut River. Okay. Um, so anyway, I was hoping that she would do that, and then I absolutely want to make sure that you're following Diane the, mm -hmm. that GreenWorks Resilient Communities Investment Plan. Okay. Because um, what I understand um, from our representatives is that it's going forward. And the money is going to be available, and it's it's the first who's in the window. So we need to talk to Chris because we want uh, Chris <coughs> Curtis because we want to make sure we're getting in this next round for another, you know, culvert or two. Okay. But we and also want to have some shovel ready projects for this, which we need to look at our um, the definition to see if we can get the sewer treatment plant, some part of the sewer treatment plant at least into it, and I think we can, 
because we were looking at the MVP program for like the concrete ta uh, tanks and mm -hmm. a couple other things Coming of that. Higher. Yeah, of the pro of that thing. So we want to make sure when we break it out and we talk to Dave Prickett that we keep in mind that the MVP and now this Green Works Resilient Communities Investment Plan um, for parts of it. Excellent. Um, I just want to mention two quick things. So it, uh, it's connected to what Carolyn was saying. Chris Curtis has also, has also prepared a Culver Replacement Municipal Assistance Grant application. There's no match, no funding or match required. Is this of the under town. from right. DER? This is the DER, yep. Yes. So this will okay. be, so he's actually asked, um, you know, he had sent it to me in draft and me and Kevin in draft. It's just basically to continue the work we're doing with MVP. It's another means of, of addressing, um, you know, the same ki kinds of challenges, the, the water issue so um, it's to basically include pr improving flow and fish and wildlife passage reducing roadway flooding and protecting public safety that's due and, next week right and, um, so he, uh, Brian was here earlier today yep. and I asked him I told him I thought we were sending something yep, and he said are. apparently there's not too many people applying because we got bumped last year and um, because our habitat was so degraded but um, since he, if he doesn't have a lot of applications, we might. Uh, yeah, I think we, we have a good chance. We're going to be competitive, so I'd good. like to put that in there yeah, too. There's no, no impact to the town. So, thank you. Okay. Yep. Because I was going to add that was on I my add. list too. So thank you. Yep. It was a good but, meeting today. I felt but, like there was, we had some potential to cover some of our costs here. Is there any discussion about the? Uh, 350th anniversary oh, celebration. Oh, I, I just want to um, report that I've been going to the meetings, um, last couple meetings, and I intend to, you know, commit to go to them. Thank um, you. It, it's wonderful. We have really a good committed group. They're moving ahead. We um, had uh, reached out to Conway um, and Sunderland, and we had presentations on that, how their celebrations went. Um, there was some research on Hadley's and uh, Hatfields is this coming year, and we're talking to them, get okay. their experiences and what they're doing. Um, we decided on a, a budget of a uh, hundred thousand. Um, it seemed relatively conservative, and it was what um, Conway and Sunderland actually spent versus um, I think Hadley had like a three hundred thousand plus. Mm -hmm. um, um, we set up the donation account Good. so that we can start fundraising and um, we put in an, um, a budget request to the finance committee and to the select board for um, $10,000. Um, so obviously we intend to raise the majority of the money. Right. Well, no, actually, if, if somebody requests Frontier go to their town, does our band charge them? Um, I don't know, actually. I don't think I, so. I know on the parades. I guess parade, where I was going with this is the that. The parades um, are running around forty to $50,000 at least, I guess. And the. I guess, I guess I'm too cheap. I think we used to have the some. fireworks and stuff are, you know, several thousand dollars. And well, fireworks. Yeah, fireworks. We used to have some pretty good parades here in town, and I was not involved at all. But I, I think if I was involved, I would reach out to numerous high schools for their marching bands oh, to participate. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. You can you can go to the Marine Corps, the Air Force, National Guard, they all have bands and things that march like that. Mm -hmm. You should reach out to auto clubs as far as, you know, cars that, to get involved. Mm -hmm. You could get involved with uh, these different uh, motorcycle organizations. I can't think of the name of them right now. Mm -hmm. they, they do a lot mm -hmm. of special things. Uh, veterans work. I think all of this could really kind of be put together for n next to no money. I mean, things like the fireworks where you're having people do it. But, uh, well, you, there's porta potties. There's details. Yep. There's you're paying for some people to participate if you yeah. choose yeah, to have like a shriners or something. Like that. Oh, well, yeah, mummers. shriners are pretty expensive. They so are, are the um, mummers or whatever. Oh yeah, oh, there's enough kids in town with four wheels. We could do the same thing. I, with well, I know you could, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. That'd be more fun. Too. A, it would be. Don't I'm dress just up like saying Halloween. the committee is working very, very hard, and um, That's great. we have a I'm donation glad. account. It's ready for. Um, you know, people to donate, start donating. Um, we intend to have all kinds of really great fundraising, fun fundraising ideas Good. and um, activities. And there'll be, um, we're going to request FCAT. Jonathan has been working with it from FCAT to 
like start documenting some of the senior stories good, and good. and history in town yeah. and we need to get uh, in touch with you know historic Deerfield DA oh yeah that. Peter Thomas um, is always is already going through old tax records and, right I mean there's all kinds there's so of much. fantastic ideas we're older that than are the happening. country so we've got to have enough stuff in anyway, that vault and wherever so that'll be great I'm anybody excited. that's interested should reach out yes. to the committee and put their name get forward involved. anybody that has a great idea please bring it forward because there's all kinds of cool things that are going to be happening. And yeah. I, I have to say it was just wonderful. And as wonderful. Diane was talking about the other day about, uh, you know, getting, um, when we have a meeting of, of the heads of Deerfield, you know, in different districts and all that stuff, and, and, and then talking with any other organizations like Yankee and anything that they're going to be doing in the next several years to be starting to plan their thing around our 350th. So, you know. Yeah, like all your events, you know, you have your bike events and you have Yankee Candle has events, and mm -hmm. the sooner you let them know that 2023 or whatever the year yeah. you're going to be celebrating, they can start planning. They plan sometimes, you know, years in advance mm -hmm. for these things. Oh, so I just you, want people to know is this it, is not like happening next year. It's 2023. No, 2023, yeah, no, but but it's still. But the events it comes, it, leading it comes up, quick. The events <laughs> yeah. leading up to That's it I mean. will be, you know, there'll be fundraising <laughs> events, but also fun things. Yeah. I mean, fun. Yeah. Things yeah. that people will want to participate in. Yeah. Uh, One of the things that I'd like to mention is yeah. I think that um, depending on our schedule, if not next weekend, next meeting, it, fairly soon, we should talk about, and I guess I'm going to word this as having a moratorium on this um, marijuana uh, growth things. Um, as being a, a member of the planning board, I was pretty disturbed at the way everything went down with this grow facility um, and that the way they merge things and it was all legal and it was done right but uh, the ink was barely dry on the papers and proceeds from that went to buying another single family house with minimal acres and you know there's soon going to be a building permit for a 60,000 square foot building going up agricultural that we have no control over nothing to say that Next fall, that doesn't get sold to a, another grow facility. And then this parcel over here gets it, you know? And I, I think that we need to take some time to figure out, you know, these loopholes in our bylaws and how we can prevent this from happening. Because I can, you know, I was talking with Dick, and we have about three other people inquiring because they saw what happened that, and as long as they have adjacent land, like I said before, they can buy a single family house, tear it down or put it all in there and, well, we've got this land over here. We're going to make the connection. They can come in. The the, uh, the marijuana people can't, but the farmer can come in, say, I'm going to put up an agricultural building, no special permits, no zoning setbacks, nothing. And they go ahead and build it, and then they can turn around. And, you know, what person, I mean, I'd probably do it myself. If somebody caught, came and offered me $2 million for a chunk of land, I'd, I'd be right there too. And then we're going to be dealing with this. What um, are we going to be dealing with? Extra money? What are you talking about? No, I'm talking about how to control this. Oh, control the growth, you mean? Of, yeah. Of how many grow facilities we'd have in town? Right. Why do we want to do that? Why do you want to do that? Yeah. Do you want to see these big 100,000 square foot buildings? I mean, people are upset they don't even want a, a commercial building 4,000 square feet. Now you can have a 100,000 square foot grow facility here and there and everywhere. Well, are, are they zoned in a specific spot? Or they can no? be anywhere in town. That's part of the issue. They can go <coughs> anywhere. They can go in your backyard. I wish. Um, no, well, I don't, I I don't just, think you're going to see them in residential neighborhoods, but I mean, I think they're going to need enough square footage, right, to put some up and... No, no, because, I, I mean, I don't know exactly I just, where your house... I would I got love to have that, that much money coming into the town. I just, I can't... It's not coming into you. It's coming to the far, the people who are selling these things. Yeah, well, and we get 3% of every one of that. 2%. Earth. For growth, two percent, right? Of growth sales. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm no, just, I agree. I'm just yeah. pointing it out. I, okay. That, no, I mean, we'll, we'll we, talk about it. I, there were some people that weren't real happy about this, the way it all went down. Okay. And I felt Let's I exposed a, a, loophole. a loophole. And you know, and okay. I, and but like I said, what you can, what you can do is propose you, you propose something to the planning board going forward. But, I mean, everything takes time. That's why I was thinking yeah, that we Yeah, but if you bring it forward, 
put it in with all these other things so that you can start zoning, talking about it. The zoning right. changes? No, well, yeah. I, I, I plan to, but yeah. I didn't know yeah. if, if the, the board wanted to think about having a moratorium for a period of time so we get these things nailed down. Because the way it is now, I mean, there's already an application for another huge building that we couldn't control. Where? Right on Route 5 and 10, at uh, Wells Crossroad. Okay. You know where Carlos Allen lives? No. All right. Uh, but I think I know where Wells Crossroad is. Yeah. Right. Well, there was a home, there's a, a, a stucco yeah. house right there. Oh, I know what you mean. Yep. Like just sold, right? and there's going to yeah. be a huge building right that there. Was oh, the, that was the property Chris Jacobs was looking at. That's right. Chris That's right. He was looking yeah. at the, the residential. Him, so, but he wanted shop. that he wanted to be. A shop. He wanted well, a, like business. A, a business. So, but there. I don't think it's business. It no, can't be a business. No, it's right. just only. Agriculture. So I mean, I think that yeah. what Kip's saying. I mean, I think just in general, there are things. To look at. To I think we. I yeah. think we have to. I think we need to look at everything. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And that's part of the sustainability business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you know, here again, you're talking. If, if you see, I, I look at everything as a big picture, and at, at the, the, the citizens' petition before us, and you talk about vulnerability and stuff like that, limiting a commercial building, four thousand square feet. Now here we're getting a sixty thousand square foot building. Well, you know, where's that impact? You know. Yeah. I, I mean, and so. Well, that's what I was and saying. It's then, the unintended consequences right. of thirty to you know sixty to thirty. But it's only it's only on small commercial areas. Right. That's what it is. Oh. But you know, I they're mean, only talking about the commercial C one and C two. And and I think that you need to look at all. We're not talking about it. agricultural. Right. We, I think that I think you're correct. We should call up the Department of. Um, Agriculture and say, okay, this is, seems to be the issue. So, what do you recommend? And that and that we have their lawyers give us some advice on this, because so they, we're, they we're not. I know from going to state commission meetings that, um, you know, marijuana is already having an effect in the sense that agricultural land is being turned over from cr edible crops. I mean, it's not saying that marijuana isn't edible, you can but eat it. it's the people are going to go. Yeah. Right. No, well, I know marijuana. You want more, yeah. you want and, corn and, and it's transitioning. Right. Into, and and right. I know that um, there is concern to make sure that there's no marijuana being grown on APR land. Right. And so, you know, parcels are being. W normally, the check there's a there's a process where someone physically checks the land to make sure there's no buildings built on them, like every three years. Mm -hmm. But they're now talking about. You know, because of all this marijuana pressure, they're making sure that all the parcels get checked, maybe even yearly. And so that's having an impact because you have to physically send someone out to look at the parcels. You know, you pull the deed and then you say, okay, there's no, nobody has built on this, right. you know, the property. So, um, well, what the planning board did to, to address that is on this parcel of APR land, we made it a condition that no building could be put on this land, regardless if it was an agricultural use, that we made that a condition so to, to try and mm -hmm. spearhead this off. But, but my concern is, it isn't about having one or two or three of these things. The, the concern is that, you know, using the agricultural exemption around all of the bylaws to get something in place, and then all of a sudden turning over But that's to why I'm saying thing, call you know? the Department of Agriculture and have their lawyers draft something up say that this is a problem in Deerfield and we want you to help us. Because hmm. yeah. that's, you know, that's what they, I mean, yeah. that's the kind of stuff that, I mean, why do we want to pay our lawyers for that? Because, I mean, that, well, except that is an impact I, well, on marijuana. I guess, I guess what I was saying is, yes. suggesting is that, you know, they the, could draft the, something the planning up board could, can work and talk about, you know, how to deal with this. I didn't know if, you know, if the board felt that it might be, a strong enough need to maybe put a temporary uh, moratorium on this until we get something in place to, to so it doesn't happen over. And over. I, I would rather just see us trying to move ahead quick. Okay. On <laughs> Nothing happens quick here. No, no, but you call up <laughs> the Department of Ag and you try to get them to draft up something that we could start looking at. Uh, oh well. I mean, if because if we're having a problem. Before I did a moratorium. How? what the real impact would be, if, even if you had three or four more in town, and well, where well, they would be. But, but if, we're having, like if you're, you're having a concern, attaching. then there are other concerns across the state. Yeah. So why don't we have a consistent, what we want is a consistent hold up in court kind of something that would work. So I think, I think where I'm, be, it, my, my thing is not against 
the marijuana. My thing is that, you know. They're bypassing. Well, it, it, to me, it's more than that. I mean, you know, and I don't want to really drag this out a lot, but when I bought my farm, everybody said back in the early 80s when I bought, oh, you know, you're going to see houses and condos all over it. Well, it's 40 years later. And there's, there's one house. There's one house. Um, and, and that, you know, I reluctantly have paid into this community preservation thing to keep open space, and, mm -hmm. and, and we've done a lot of progress. And now we're going to start, we're going to see yet another big building. And, and it's, it's not just one 9,000 square foot store, we're talking 60,000 square foot thing right on the highway. You know, mm -hmm. when you drive down the road, well, you used to be able to see down to the river, now you can see this monstrosity thing. Mm -hmm. So, and even where the existing greenhouses were, they're putting up another, I don't know if it was, 38,000 square foot on top of the 80,000 that's already there in a, a residential area. And these are now in residential areas. And what I'm saying is that, so this one's going to happen too. Mm -hmm. Where's the next one that happened? I've heard that right down Wells Cross Road across from the river, it's gonna happen again. Right. You know, and where's the next one gonna be? And you know, before you know it, right. there might be seven or eight of these things in there. So they're coming under this sort of sort of a certain auspice, but then they could be, they're being right. converted into another type of... Well, right? like I said, I, th I think you need to call the okay. Department of Ag and get some, right. explain to yeah. what's going on and, and mm -hmm. see what, they are what their lawyers suggest. Um, I'm not sure what that, yeah, I'm not, and I'm not sure who that... I don't think they would. I mean, they... Yeah, the, the, I, the, I spoke to someone at DAR, yeah. John LeBeau, he's yeah. the commissioner, so they're not going to... They're yeah, not they're interested not even in, interested in this one, so... No, you know. they're not interested in opining at this point. <laughs> well, I think I, that's what I, I would right, say. So, <laughs> let, let's move on. There's no one here, so there's no public comment. Do you want to go into executive session so we can finish this police <laughs> negotiation and be done with it? All sound good? I hope so. Make a, okay. make a motion to enter in. Oh, you're going uh, yeah, yeah, to read Pursuant to Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 30A, Section 21A-3, to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or <coughs> litigation uh, position of the public body, and the chair so declares. I second that. Uh, uh, all oh, you, or, no, that's good. Okay. Second. Yep. Yep. Um, All those I, in favor. Carolyn Ness. Yes. I, I, Hen go ahead. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Henry Camosa. Yep. Okay. And we would. We will not come back to open session. We'll adjourn, right? We adjourn. Okay. Thank and, you. And we are meeting next week. Yes. Meeting yes. Next week. Next week. Same okay. time. Same time, same bad chance.